Hi, I'm M. Angel, and today we're gonna to be talking about Call Me By Your Name. A sweet little coming of age story of a young man who finds love during the summer of 1983. So you have this French, Italian, American family in Italy. Our main character is Elio, played by Timothée Chalamet, and Oliver, played by Army Hammer. And the father, Mr. Pullman, is played by Michael Stolberg, but I thought he was Joaquin Phoenix the whole time, so... Oops. Anyway, I'm not too sure how this all works out. Mr. Pullman is a professor and he welcomes this older college student to come and study with him, help him on a thesis. I don't, I didn't understand why he was there. Whatever. It doesn't really matter why he's there. The point is that he's there and Elio is there and we've got ourselves a recipe for tasty sensuality. I really liked this movie. Even though it is two hours and long, I have to say, if you're looking for a vacation, and you're in a country where there actually is a cold winter, well, you're gonna appreciate this movie because it's warmth, it's summertime, it's Italy. You have the sound of birds and the breeze. Oh, they just lie in pools and they're all shirtless most of the time because it's nice and warm and cool and breezy and just a vacation for the spirit and the eyes. I have to mention that I do not like coming of age stories. It is a genre that doesn't interest me in general. Like the movie Boyhood, I thought it was amazing the way they created it and the time it took to produce that movie, but I wasn't interested in, in the least. Coming of age stories are usually like somebody kicking a rock from here to there. So you just see a tiny push of evolution in a character it's like, ooh, they changed slightly. As I said, it's two hours and there's a lot of lingering and it's very European in the way it's shot. Typical stereotype of European movies where they have a lot of silences and just staring. You'll hear horses in the background. Did you get the butter? Yes. That's good. I also got some bread. Thank you. But of course in a foreign language. So it was kind of like that, but not too much. What I really loved about it is that I could relate in the sense that I've had a precocious summer romance. So I was in Elio's shoes. That forbidden love that really shouldn't happen and it does. Oh, it brought me back. It's always best when that summer romance happens when you're in a foreign country or at summer camp or somewhere else. The people involved in the romance know that it's temporary and for some reason the bubble you're in makes everything feel 10 times more intense and important and you feel like this is where your life stops. Young puppy love during the summer. It's an experience unlike any other and still to this day as much as I know it was wrong in so many ways and melodramatic in so many ways I'm so thankful I had it and I could see that with Elio. I felt for him and everything he went through. I thought it was kind of convenient that Elio and Oliver shared a bathroom. I really thought that would be a plot point and it would be used a lot, but it wasn't. You know what was used a lot? That apricot tree. I loved the scene where everyone's gathered and they talk about apricots and the etymology of the word. Who knew that etymology could be so dirty? Talking about how apricot is like Greek stealing from the Latin and it's all about precocious, you know, mm -hmm, unripened, not ripe yet, precocia, and then it becomes albacoc. Ooh! Mm hmm Etymology, my apricot. All that cook talk. Army Hammer, to me, will always be the Winklevoss, you know, just alpha male. He's such a man with his voice. And he's so alpha in this movie and strong and complicated. And I love the contrast with Elio, uh, which I love that name, by the way, because when his father called out for him, I thought he was like, hey, yo, like, how do you go to call your child? Hey, yo. Elio's like lanky and skinny and kind of scrawny and he's not completely ripened. He's an apricot. And, mm -hmm. So yeah, they showed that tree a lot, apricot tree, and I guess it was supposed to be symbolic, the ripening of the apricots during the summer and how it goes from being so frail and to juicy, ripe, and ready to be squished. 
But it's the kind of thing that in a book, yes, symbolism, we're more used to it. But in a movie, it's kind of heavy handed. There are so many dynamics in this movie, layers that actually make it interesting. Elio is 17, I think he mentions it in the movie. I'm not sure exactly how old Oliver is. I think he's in his 20s, mid 20s maybe. So we've also got that dynamic going on of a younger man lusting for an older man. For me, love and romantic movies, there has to be dialogue. That's how I see two characters falling for each other is when they have this witty banter and they connect and they click on a verbal scale. And we have these intellectuals here and I thought, oh, okay, he's gonna use his graduate words to seduce Elio and Elio loves to read. So they're gonna be talking a lot and going back and forth and being all witty and haha, I'm smarter than you. But no, not really. This was way more about lust than it was about love, in my opinion. But then again, I remember what it's like to be 16. And as much as I thought I was falling for the person, it was all really just coming of age and your body changing and adolescence and all the hormones that come with it, it's about lust. You're more in love with the person that you think the other person is than who they actually are. The slightest things are enough for you to create a whole scenario. So you see that with Elio, he gets brushed off by Oliver, who is kind of complicated in the sense that sometimes he's distant, sometimes he doesn't answer, he can be kind of rude, he's kind of forceful. Play that song for me, come with me, goodbye, I'm gonna leave you right now. But you see Elio also trying to come into his own alpha maleness and he's trying to fight back and be like, no, I'm gonna turn the tables on you and I'm thinking of one specific scene where he's playing the guitar but then he moves it to the piano and he won't give Oliver what he wants because he's just trying to give him a taste of his own medicine. He can't seem to read him properly so he's trying to also play the same mind games with him. And that's what I appreciated that you see in this character, you see his age, you see him being a 17 year old immature dorko sometimes. For example, there's a scene where Oliver says something to Elio and Elio mocks him by saying it back to him. Let's go to the river. Let's go to the river. <laughs> Pure 17 year old foolishness. I also want to mention that maybe I'm just noticing it, but I think that Hollywood movies, mainstream movies, we're seeing more and more movies that are focused on story and less on specific character traits. What I mean is that this is a love story about two people that happen to be gay. And that dynamic does come into play in the sense that Elio isn't out and I don't think he has embraced his homosexuality yet. Neither has Oliver. There's a lot at play here. We have religion, we have society, societal norms, all of these things. But what I mean is that that isn't the thing that the movie is about, how he is distraught over being gay and he's fighting against it and oh, being in the closet and all that. It's like more about him as a boy becoming a man, a teenager. And there's all these layers of forbidden, don't go there, yet he wants to go there, the forbidden fruit, the apricot. That's just a regular teenager. It doesn't matter what the orientation is. So really I have to say props to Timothy. He did a lot of subtle acting that brought a quiet, introverted character to life. Probably in the book, he talks a lot and it's all happening in his head, but in the movie, he's pretty quiet. You can tell that there's a lot going on inside this kid, and that is because Timothy brought it, so fantastic. Actually, the cast overall did a fantastic job. Everyone was natural and real and layered. I thought that the mother was a bit one note, she was just loving. She was love incarnate. So, amore mio, cara. It's just so sweet all the time. And I'm maybe just so not used to seeing kind, loving mothers. <laughs> Especially a French, I don't know so much about Italian mothers, but I know French mothers and they snap easily. They often get frustrated, but this mother was just like always chill. She looks like her and her husband and are happy, so maybe that's what a loving marriage does to a woman and maybe she's really enjoying the countryside. There was also a lot of intercourse, so be warned people. This isn't the notebook where things stay sweet and PG-13, like things get real. <laughs> And the last thing I want to say though is the whole call me by your name thing. It maybe sounds better in a book, but on screen it's just kind of weird. Calling the other person by your own name? What? Okay, I think I've addressed all the non-spoilery aspects of the movie. I want to get into details and talk about things, so spoiler alert. 
Esther Garel plays Marcia in this movie and she's kind of Elio's beard. He's a young teenager. I appreciate that he isn't perfect because he kind of uses her to release all of the sexual frustration that's building within him because he can't release it with the person he wants to release it with. But I do appreciate that in the end she figured it out. It's just kind of heartbreaking because she really had a crush on him. But that happens I guess in a lot of gay kids lives, right? They're gonna play straight because they kind of feel like they have to. The parents were also... They were open-minded and progressive, but at the same time, weren't they a bit pimpish? They kind of pimped Elio out to this older man. Now I know, we're talking about European standards, so they have a different notion of what maturity means. They're more free-flowing with sexuality and their son is exploring himself and becoming himself and I guess they're more realistic, right? They're not like, no, you have to be innocent and we want to preserve your innocence, so uh, stay away from this older man. Isn't it still a parent's job to kind of shelter and protect your kids? I don't know. And the big reveal, if you will, is that Mr. Pullman is also a closeted homosexual. I was like, what is going on? How is everybody gay? I mean, it wasn't a shocker. I thought that it was really sweet, the talk he had with Elio after Oliver's departure. Man, that puppy love is strong. And when it ends at the end of the summer, I was like Elio, just sunken, broken. You feel like you're never gonna love again. Wherever you are, you're not there. You're still in the recesses of your mind, reliving those moments that you shared with that person that you never expected would happen. I, of course, had to hide it because there was no way I was telling my parents about this, even though they suspected that I was running around with the boys in the neighborhood in France. Parents usually know, but no one ever talked to me and said, look, it hurts, you know, you experience your first heartbreak, blah, blah, blah. No, I had to suck it up and take it like a woman. But here he had a talk with his father who was really sweet and understanding, but also kind of like, wait, do you, do you love your wife? Or is she just a beard? Isn't that something that will kind of mess with a kid's head? Like, whoa, does dad, is he bi or straight, gay, what? I do love that they had that little road trip before Oliver left. That was so cute and so sweet and I felt so giddy and excited for Elio. And then we come to the end and that phone call broke my heart. It's like, why did you have to call and do this? Why? Why? Couldn't you just do it like everyone else and he'll find out years later on Facebook that you're married and you just disappeared into the abyss. I don't know, it's probably better this way and more mature, but it hurts. Oof, poor Elio. And I love how the parents were so sympathetic too. And I love how the credits are rolling as we just stay with Elio who is lost in thought. I've said all I have to say. I've said maybe a little too much. It's your turn to talk. Let us know in the comment section below. What did you think of Call Me By Your Name? If you saw it, love to hear from you. Are there any movies you would like me to review? I would love your suggestions, comment section, you know what to do. Before you go, please click on the like button, subscribe to Music Game News, turn on that notification bell if you want to be notified when a video drops. And of course, thank you for watching. I had a great time with you. I'm M Angel signing off. Ciao, bello. Au revoir.